From Utah's first TV station, ABC4 News celebrates 75 years. Well, exactly 75 years ago this evening, our TV station signed on the air as Utah's first TV station. And Salt Lake City would be only the 13th city in America to get TV. Hello and welcome to this special ABC 4 75th anniversary celebration. We're cozying up in front of our TV here in our 1948 flashback living room. And yes, as Craig said, our station was the only TV station between Chicago and Los Angeles on the air back in April of 1948. TV was really the electronic and scientific wonder and Salt Lake City got to see it before most of the country, a cause for celebration then and certainly after three quarters of a century, it is a cause for celebration tonight. Indeed, a celebration among all of us, the thousands who've worked at ABC4 and the millions who have grown up as the TV generation. We're gonna have some fun and look back at our pioneering history. Well, let's relive that exciting night, April 19th, 1948, when pictures magically flew through the air to Utah's television sets, like that one. <laughs> Salt Lake City saw a strange new word light up an old building, television. All systems were go from this Buck Rogers looking control room on that Monday night, April 19, 1948. A crew member held up this very card. An engineer threw a switch on the transmitter to go on the air and the signal was sent to the tower on top of the old Walker Bank building it had been a decade in the making. Utah's first TV station was on the air, and we still are on the air 75 years later. Much of all this was handmade that night. There were no electronic graphics, for example. The late Mark Hampson made all the signs. I mean, he made all the signs for the shows. Barbershop Harmonies, Sports Window, World Series Report, and the Spring Whispers Show. He did all the station ID signs. They were among his favorites. Yes, and all the publicity signs. I lettered all the cameras. I lettered all the trucks, the parabolas. I lettered all the office doors. I did all the on-the-air cards. I did all the scenery. Uh, as an artist, we as hired as an artist to do artwork for printing. We did store displays. And he painted all the sets. This paper I could buy 12 feet high and 30 feet long. So we painted a lot of scenery on paper. It was easy to roll up. Sometimes we'd have back-to-back -back shows while the camera was on somebody else. We'd roll that paper up and have another set back of that. The paper behind the singer, the barn scene, the bar scene, and his favorite one was this. The mountain scene. The mountain scene we use for, for everything. The employees all marked those first days in front of that one. They were our pioneers. One was announcer Alan Frank. He was hired shortly after the station started broadcasting. He said, now I'm going to bring you aboard. You'll be the first television announcer that we hired. And I'm going to hire you for $150 a month. But you be quiet about that because everyone else is being paid $100 a month. They had to improvise as they went along. There were no powerful floodlights for the basically homemade cameras, so they made banks of spotlights that could follow the action. Of course, the lights broiled everyone in front of them. We would go through five, six shirts a day, perspiring. That's how warm it was. All the shows were created locally and all needed new sets. We're only on the air on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so Friday night the wrestles ended. We had Saturday and Sunday to get set back up for Monday. Uh, I thought a lot of times the time that we spent, it was a 12 and 14 hour a day getting ready to do two hours on Monday. You would think that they would have run out of program ideas. The crews were put to work. Mark Hampson played the musical saw. The chief engineer's kids played the piano. And when a film broke, Ellen Frank played that piano and Mark Hampson would make up a sign stating that the film indeed had broken. They finally moved my 
first line shop, Little Room, is right up by the announcer's booth because sometimes the film would break. Hurry up and make a poster. Please stand by having techni technical difficulties. A lucky few had the television sets in Salt Lake City. Other lucky viewers drew seats in store display windows. They were not alone that first night. Hundreds crowded the sidewalks to watch them watching TV. ZCMI had one in its window. George's Furniture had another. Come on down and see the first night of TV. Later, there would be rooms full of viewers. Folks were amazed. It was all magic. They watched hobby shows. And they watched commercials. And they kept their eyes open well into the night. Those first days were successful. Salt Lake City took to TV. In fact, Mark had to make a new sign. We now doubled our programming to six nights a week. And goodness crack, they just, it seems, did not understand just how big of a deal this really would be and how it would change the entertainment and news industry. But they did know they were having fun and coming up. Now you gotta see it to believe it. It was the Tella wedding. And when it came to TV and our early audience, everyone said, I do at the Tella wedding. You're watching ABC4 News, celebrating 75 years. Welcome back. Those early TV pioneers had to be creative with no network programming and no videotape. Live events were a big thing, Craig. One of our favorites was the idea to have what our early programmers were calling a telewedding. And who would not want to watch people get married on TV? <laughs> now, it was a great idea in 1948. A couple of years ago, we showed some pictures of that telewedding, and guess what? The happy couple called the station right after that news report and they said, hey, we were the bride and groom of the telewedding. Well, tonight they remember it all. How about a telewedding? Now, how cool is that? Five years ago, we found a couple pictures of it and we showed it. The winners had written an essay on why they wanted a home. That was first prize. But there was also the telewedding on TV from the fairgrounds. We're having a sandwich and we found on the, on the counter a little tab that, where they were announcing this contest. Yes, Veer McHenry was in love with Barbara Jean Oliver. But they were going to wait a couple of years to get married. It was just a lark that we <laughs> filled out that application, that little essay that they had, had us write. Well, they won. They would get married at the State Fairgrounds Home Show. Yes, all on television. They waited, as did the town wait, as did the lucky ones with TV sets. It was a big deal. And then it happened. Yes, in front of a television camera. They would be married. It was live and special. To this day, she has her wedding dress from the telewedding. They had us march in, and uh, her father brought her down the aisle and turned her over to me. There were only a few TVs in Utah then. Store owners put televisions in their store windows, and they set out chairs so customers could see this odd thing called television. That's how their friends saw the telewedding. There was a, a television set in the, in the window of Murray Music, and they said they had a big crowd out there that watched it from there. Barbara Jean's dad also had a rare television in his tavern, so he was already a fan. This was great. Dad kind of liked it, they didn't were, you? They were pretty excited. Yeah, I think they were. Probably more than we were. <laughs> I think so. Now Channel 4 did its part, the live telewedding, but some other sponsors, well, some things kind of got lost. There was a promise for a house, at least a really good price for a house, and that didn't quite happen. One of the people there that was in charge said something about that we they would move that home onto a site and they would give us the down payment for the house. And that's as much as we ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> and a promise of a night at the Hotel Utah Bridal Suite. We went over to the hotel and uh, the bridal suite was booked. 
as was every other room in the Hotel Utah. So they housed us that night in the band room with all the instruments. <laughs> I know we wish that we could give you that honeymoon suite now. Oh wait, the Hotel Utah is gone. I can't promise you the Hotel Utah, but at least we could promise it's gonna be on. It's good. <laughs> yeah, I, I always that. loved you. I knew you'd do something good. You know, they're so nice. Now, I really feel bad about the mix-up at the Hotel Utah, and I wasn't even born then. But they did get the honeymoon. A very nice, all-expense uh, honeymoon in Elko, Nevada. You know, Veer says what they didn't get doesn't matter. He got Barbara Jean. That was the grand prize. All from the 1948 telewedding and a really sweet couple. A couple so sweet they could give you a cavity. I would say I do to watching that a million more times. Yeah, maybe we should bring the telewedding back. Yeah. <laughs> there and, you go. And maybe we can even get them to Las Vegas this time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, how sad. Yeah. All right. What a sweet couple, though. It's their 75th anniversary as well. So happy Diamond Jubilee anniversary. Yes, and we have more to celebrate coming up. One of the first live remote trucks in the country, meaning some of the first live broadcasts of football, baseball, and even the circus. And don't forget, wrestling and bowling. <laughs> Well, live coverage outside of the studio was a big undertaking in 1948, and it still can be quite the adventure today at times even. Well, our station got one of the first live remote trucks in the country. Now, we only had a couple of cameras and a few microphones back then, so the engineers had to empty out the station and put everything in the truck, sometimes on a daily basis. Ooh. Yes, but the results are amazing, and fortunately, we have old films that were recorded right off the screens for some of these shows. From its first day, our engineers saw the need to show television from where the events happened. We had one of the very first mobile units in America, and so we had some of the very first live remote broadcasts in America, and thus some of the very first live broadcasts of baseball, wrestling, boxing, circuses, parades, state fairs, ribbon cuttings, book signings, bowling, golf, ranch and roundups, water softeners, and mattresses. It was nearly a daily scene. Crews would empty the building and load up the truck and then they would get to a location and put it all together. This was an event at the Capitol building. You see out there perched on the ledge, there is a camera person who is much braver than I am. Now sometimes this was all to do a commercial in a remote location or the opening of a store. Now the promotional value wasn't lost on the station. Thousands watched the remote van instead of the event. A TV truck was a sight only found in a handful of cities in the entire country. I guess it was kind of like a space capsule or maybe the first airplane. In fact, as we mentioned, we did the 1948 Utah football season and the paper was so interested in that it devoted more of the article to the broadcast than to the game. Quarterback Parkinson's pass was a million and a half tiny picture elements how you could see eight or nine players at a time, and how a hair-like beam sweeps across your set at home. And it gave the station a swell picture of the remote truck crew instead of anything in the game. The crews and the announcers were pioneers. Of course, they also reflected the times. Now, bowling was big in those days, and so they did bowling. A film camera shot these pictures of a live remote from the classic lanes 75 years ago. Our announcer for bowling was the legendary Paul James. He was also sent to announce the boxing matches. Again, it was a first. The official decision. 136, 
Over. I'd never done a fight before. I didn't know how to do a fight, but I sat there at ringside and I remembered how the, the guys used to do it on radio, so I did the fight. Our station got quite a reputation for doing the remote broadcasts. After we finally got the network to reach us by microwave, we started doing nationwide remotes with a number of cameras hooked up to a truck. This was the women's choir from Temple Square. We did the full Salt Lake Oratorial Society Choir from the Wasatch Mountains on a New Year's Day, complete with six cameras. And famed announcer Dave Garraway took the microphone to a live fall dance for Train a Dream of a Past Summer at Lagoon, closed for the season. Had a dance to that dream and their inside of experience deep in their memory, like the story of a child that brought this dream to life. In the valley between the Wasatch Mountains, midway between Salt Lake City and Ogden, Utah, the Virginia Tanner dancers began with an experience and created a dance story entitled a dream about summer. Summer was yesterday, and today was autumn. Our genius director, Danny Ranger, was orchestrating the many cameras. As the music was playing, we had a musician standing behind me, showing me exactly where I was in the music at all times. So th that was unusual, too, So most of the time a director's working off a script. Well, now you can say without romantic equivocation that you saw a dream dancing, and on live TV. My favorite was done at Elta again, all live, with our great announcer, Ellen Mall, doing the commentary. Again, a national broadcast. This is literally a carnival atmosphere, with the snow falling in the beautiful Wasatch National Forest. Enthusiastic about skiing, as Damon Runyon's characters were about a daily double at Jamaica racetrack. But here, there's nothing to lose, and everyone can afford it. The price of the sport is the slight risk of the unmentionable busted tibia of your careless. But most every winter sportsman can afford the price of food and bunk bed at Alpha. But now, let's leave the warmth of the lodge and see what's doing in the snow. But is it safe? The idea was to then shoot off a controlled avalanche, just as the Forest Service does for safety on the mountain. Ellen continued to read Danny Ranger's script, building the drama. Men of the Forest Service race against time and the terror of an avalanche on top of a mountain. By now, the fog was so bad you couldn't see much at all, and everything was dripping wet. Three seconds. Two seconds. Maul hit the big moment. Cue the avalanche. One second. It never went off. And Danny kept yelling in, in, in the earphones, cue the avalanche. Ah, but it was all live. Well, the early programmers at our station had quite a reputation doing shows seen live throughout the country. Yeah, our engineers were called upon to do some pretty amazing coverage. I can only imagine what they thought when the avalanche failed on cue or we had that rare foggy day at Alta. But at the end of the day, that's live TV for you. Yeah. <laughs> and the national shows, meaning the network, arrives in Salt Lake City. That's right, what an exciting time it was and they wanted everyone to tune in. So in a moment, we show you promotions that we can only describe as our good friend Craig Wood as <laughs> swell <laughs> from the 1950s and 1960s. Stay with us. So we finally got the national network shows to go along with our local shows and as you might imagine the station wanted everyone to know about it. Well Craig found some of those early promotion spots of course so you can't really describe them you just have to see them. That's something new is ABC with giant steps we've made our bid for mastery a brand new TV network is born that's why we're proudly tuning our horn, singing praise.
choices of A, B, C. A, B, C. A, B, C. Yes, we now had great shows. My name is Alan Maxwell. I am transmitting from a station on the third planet. Such as the monster guy. Oh no, he has broken through the cardboard box thing. Listen! It's from another dimension, another galaxy. What's going on? He's very upset, Dr. Graves. He wants to see Dr. Thompson. Well, uh, why don't you just sit over here? You touch me again and I'll kill you. And my favorite, a show about a clarinet player gone mad. Yes, TV has come a long way, but as long as we've had shows, by golly, we have had promotions. Exciting things are happening on Channel 4. You're going to see spectacular and sports events galore. You're going to see the very best shows. And most of them will be in color. Exciting things are happening at KTVT. Channel 4 is jumping with activity. You're going to see a season like you've never seen before. Exciting things are happening on Channel 4. Exciting things are happening on Channel 4. Oh, it makes me want to watch. And you know what? Exciting things continue to happen on ABC4. Hold on, I'm going to give it a try. Exciting things continue to happen on ABC4. Right, Craig? Come on, back me up. Yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed. If this TV thing doesn't work out for you. Oh, stop. <laughs> And all this year, we will continue to celebrate our 75th year of broadcasting in Utah alongside you, the TV generation. And as the guys in the promotion were singing, and most of our shows will be in color. <laughs> Woo! All right, Craig Worth, well, in honor of our anniversary today, we are hosting a celebration here at the studio. We're going to send it out live now to our vice president and general manager, Mark Danielson, to wrap things up in style. Save us some cake. cake.